Hello, I'm Heidi Shedlock and welcome to my studio. I want to take you on a little adventure with me today, a little adventure into the African bush because my husband and I love to go off on little road trips and I always take my sketchbooks and some art materials along with me. I have traveling with art materials uh, so well organized and I will share it with you sometime soon. But on this particular trip, I decided that I wasn't going to take anything initially, purely because I needed a bit of a break. I'd been working really hard and I decided I wasn't going to create any art. I wasn't going to do any work. I wasn't going to think about work. I wasn't going to film. So uh, I apologize in advance because I didn't actually film much. And even the little film of the monkeys, which you'll see, was filmed vertically instead of horizontally because I actually filmed it to send to my children to show them the cheeky monkeys that were visiting us every day. I didn't actually want to do any work on this trip. So I thought I wasn't going to take my art materials with, but I ended up taking just two things with me. Because you see, traveling with art materials doesn't have to be such a big thing. And I'm so glad I took them because it's really hard as an artist to switch off visually to all the things around you. And I often get people saying to me, Heidi, I really wanted to take my sketchbook away on holiday with me, but it all just felt like too much to pack. I didn't know what materials to take. I didn't know what sketchbooks to take. I didn't have enough space in my bags. I was worried it was going to be too heavy to carry. I was worried that the paint materials would make a mess or spill. And it all just sometimes feels overwhelming to take your art materials away on a holiday with you. So today I want to show you how easy it can be. I also want to show you how when you are away on holiday, you don't need to be creating magnificent works of art in your sketchbook. It's simply about recording all of the beauty or the interesting things that you are seeing. It's about being inspired by the colors and the textures and the patterns and making simple recordings of those. Because when you are visually aware, and I do believe that when we carry a sketchbook around with us, it just makes us more visually aware of everything that is happening around us. And when you become visually aware and you notice those things, you store that in your visual memory bank and your soul tank, and you come back to your studio just feeling so much more inspired. So despite me not wanting to take any art materials away with me, I'm really happy that I took just these two things. And I want to share with you today how simple it can be to travel with art materials. Let me show you what I took away with me. These are the two items that I took away with me. Simple, easy, no fuss. They could slip into my handbag. Now, first of all, the book that I've taken with me these are simple little moleskin books and I absolutely love these. I have loads of them and I keep them in my handbag. I always have a little one like this that is in my handbag that I can use to sit and draw if I'm sitting waiting for a friend at a coffee shop or, you know, sitting waiting at a doctor's appointment. So easy to just have something in your handbag that you can sketch with. Nice and small, they just slip in and fit easily. So this is a landscape one that I picked up and I thought this might be quite fun for traveling as well. So this is the little moleskin book that I took away with me. There's the brand name, moleskin, and they're really nice, flexible little books. Beautiful for just slipping into your handbag. Now I took with me a graphite stick. Here we go, can you see it? It's simply called a graphite stick. And all this is, is like a giant pencil. So this is the lead pencil, a graphite, only it doesn't have any wood around it like a normal pencil. So you're probably wondering why didn't I just take a normal pencil? Well, you see, the thing is that a normal pencil, if the nib breaks, then I'm going to have to have a sharpener to sharpen it in order to be able to continue working with it. And I really didn't want to take a sharpener with me. I could have also simply just taken a pen, but I've also been in a situation when the pen has run dry or stopped working on me. And so I find the graphite stick to be the most reliable. It doesn't need sharpening. It's definitely not going to run out on me. Now I have a couple of graphite sticks 
and you can get a variety of different types in uh, your art supplier stores. The reason why I love taking a graphite stick and the reason why I took this lovely big one is because of the beautiful marks it can make. So if we go onto the page, I can use it like a normal pencil and get a normal pencil line, but I very rarely hold my materials, you know, as if I, a writing tool. I can also put it on the side and get beautiful uh, shaded marks with it. I can alter the way that I use this in terms of a material and how I'm applying the graphite. So I really love this big chunky graphite stick. I think it gives me a great variety of mark making ability, even more so than a pencil. So super easy, a graphite stick, a book, pop them in my handbag and I was ready to go on a holiday. Someone is not so happy to see that his mommy and daddy are packing their bags and off on a little road trip. We live in South Africa on the east coast in a province called KwaZulu-Natal. And we are really blessed to have a beautiful little game reserve called Shishlui Umfolozi right in our little province. It gets its name from the black and white Umfolozi River that flows not only through the game reserve but out to sea. We are staying in a small thatched hut tucked away under the trees, under the big expanse of the African sky. I'm not a landscape painter, but I'm always drawn to the beautiful colours of the skies in the African bush, the beautiful light, the great big expanse of land and the smells. There's something about the smell and the sound of being out in the African bush. In my sketchbook, I capture simple, almost map-like images of the land ahead and the rolling clouds above. I am not a landscape painter, but neither am I a painter of wildlife animals. But my sketchbooks are full of quirky little drawings that have been captured of the animals that I've seen throughout the game park. I don't try to capture realistically the animals. Honestly, they move too quickly and are sometimes gone in the fleet of an eye. But I try to remember the shapes, the patterns, the markings, and my sketchbooks are just quick little renditions, almost like drawings where you draw without looking. I'm really just trying to capture the basic shapes that I see. I think that too often in our sketchbooks we become focused on perfection rather than merely capturing the essence of what it is that our eyes have seen. I don't want to focus on perfection. I want to allow my eyes the joy of being able to find all the interesting visuals around me, be able to find the beauty without focusing on perfection, my hand merely recording what I see. We are visited daily by the cheeky little vervet monkeys who have just had babies. They frolicked and played and rolled around on the grass, moving way too quickly for me to capture them. But I had such fun capturing just the essence of their movements and their shapes as they played on the grass in front of us. I'm not looking for perfect drawings. I want to capture their fun, their movement, their shapes. I'm also drawn to the huge old trees in the landscape. There's a majestic big tree near our outdoor cooking area. It fascinates me. Of course, I record it in my sketchbook. One evening, there is a huge African storm and I sit patiently trying to capture the beauty of this tree in the lightning. There's nothing quite like an African storm. It's almost time to go home again, but my heart is feeling full. And although I only traveled with a sketchbook and a pencil, the colors and the textures and the light are embedded in my visual memory. You see, the thing is that when you have a sketchbook, you just become more visually aware. You notice the things around you. And I can't think of anything better than keeping my eyes open to the beauty of the shapes and the colors and the light and the textures all around me especially when I'm out in the bush. My soul tank is full and I'm ready to go home. And I know somebody else who's going to be super happy to see us too. I hope you 
hope you enjoyed that little trip. Next time I'm on a road trip, I promise I will film more because we have so many beautiful little spots in South Africa and I'd love to take you along with me and to share with you how easy it is to travel with your art materials. I also promise that I'll share what I take with me when I pack more than just two items with me because traveling with your art materials really can be easy. It's just about being a little bit organized. So I do have a little art haul that has arrived. Some things that I have ordered in, some of them are repeat things that I know I love to use when I'm traveling. So I thought I would show you the new art supplies that have come in because they really are specific to things that I know I will use when I'm traveling with my art supplies. So let me show you some of them in case you are wanting to start getting organized, giving some thought to some materials that you can take away with you. I want to share a little art haul with you today, things that I have purchased in that I know are going to be super useful when I'm on a little road trip or traveling with my art supplies. Now, the first thing I have got here is a little uh, book that is very similar to the moleskin book that I've just shown you. But the reason why I bought it, now let me just get the, the label off, it is 300 GMS paper. And so I know that the paper inside here is going to be nice and thick and beautiful for watercolor. So it really will hold watercolor uh, or wet materials. And I love the fact that the cover was a hard cover, unlike my little moleskin, which is a soft cover. So I thought that this might be quite nice to travel with because sometimes you're standing and you're drawing and this would, uh, you know, be, I won't have to lean the little book on something. The moleskin is soft, so you do need to put it down on a surface to be able to draw in it. Whereas this is nice and hard, beautiful thick paper, so it'll be able to hold my gouache, my watercolors, anything that I'm traveling with that requires a, a little bit of water added to it. So I'm really excited about that and it just feels nice and sturdy. I love my moleskin, but I thought this would be really uh, fun to travel with as well. So that is the first little purchase that I found. The next thing I found were, was a pack of water brushes. Now this water brush set is simply replacing a million that I already have in my studio. Now I absolutely love these water brushes. I have so many of them. As a matter of fact, many of them need replacing. I'm going to show you how I use them and they are absolutely fabulous for traveling with. Once you have your water brush full of water at the back, you can travel with just this brush. Now a lot of traveling paint sets come with these ridiculous tiny little travel brushes. I don't find these useful at all. Most of the times they are really small brushes which are difficult to paint with uh, unless you're working really fine detail but you still require a pot of water to paint with these brushes. And sometimes that can be really messy to travel with or you don't have a place to wash your brushes. So that is where the beauty of these come in. You don't need any pots of water to clean them or activate your paint. So I have a bit of watercolor here and I'm going to show you how the water in the back here keeps the brushes wet. So what I can do is I can activate this paint and be able to paint with it. If I want to water it down, I simply allow my brush to add more water because the water at the back is going to filter through your brush. Now let's say I want to change color. No dipping into a water pot, no water pot needed. I simply take my cloth and I wipe my brush on a cloth. The brush comes off clean. Look, you can see it's not giving off any more orange. And I can then go in with my next color, activate my yellow, and off I go. Want to change your color, wipe your brush, and activate your color, and off you go. No pots of water needed. One simple brush with water in the back. I absolutely love these brush pens. I wouldn't be able to travel with watercolor or gouache without them. So this little set is a replacement for a whole lot of water brushes that have really seen their day. The next two things that I purchased were Posca acrylic pens. Now, sometimes it's not feasible to travel with your paints or be able to have wet supplies. And some places won't actually, you know, if you go to certain gardens or public houses, they don't actually allow you in 
with painting materials, but they will let you in with sketching materials. And these are actually acrylic paint, Posca pens. So what I usually do is I will take my pens and you'll see I've, not, I've bought quite neutral colors. You get them in a variety of different colors. But what you can do is apply the color as if it was a paint. You can actually work into it. What I love to do is use these as I would use my paint to draw or work into something or start to draw something, work into it, and then what one can do. My microphone battery died on me mid-filming here and I didn't even realize, but what I am explaining to you here is that once you have laid down a foundation of the Posca acrylic markers, just like you would use the paint, you can then work on top of them using a variety of other mixed media like oil pastels or chalk pastels or even pencil crayons. You can work anything on top of the acrylic Posca pens, building up layers just as you would if you started off with an initial paint layer. So these are absolutely fabulous to take away with you, especially if you're worried about the mess of taking paint. Last of all, this soft pink case is to carry my pencil crayons and any other materials like marker pens in. There's nothing more irritating than going to sharpen a pencil crayon and the lead keeps falling out of it or the nib of the pencil crayon keeps being broken because it is being bumped around or knocked or dropped. So when you are traveling, it's really important to carry them in a case that holds them securely. So these beautiful soft fabric rolls are just the thing to pack all your pencil crayons and things into, roll them up and you've got everything all in one space. Now this design is not really ideal. I plan on having my own design made by my mum, who is a fabulous, fabulous seamstress, because I would like to have some different size pouches, some pouches that are big enough to hold the big fat Posca pens, and some other smaller pouches that can hold maybe an eraser or a pencil sharpener or any other little bits that I want to take with me. So this one is not necessarily ideal but I am going on a road trip soon and I wanted a new pencil case holder. So this is going to be just perfect and will definitely serve the purpose of keeping my pencil crayons safe. Before I go, I want to share with you something beautiful that I got gifted this week from one of my Creative Community Studio members. Creative Community Studio is an online uh, support group that I run for artists. And one of the members have started importing some beautiful sketchbooks from India. Now, she has kindly gifted me one of these sketchbooks and I can't wait to show it to you. But first of all, look at the beautiful design on the package that she has sent me. Uh, I actually almost don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to tear the paper when I open it. But I want to show it to you because I know that you are going to absolutely love this as much as I do. There we go. It's all unwrapped. And look at how beautiful this is. She brings these beautiful sketchbooks in from India to South Africa. She imports them in. And she sells them in her company called Colors of Cotton, uh, where she sells a whole range of beautiful things. But... These sketchbooks are absolutely gorgeous. Every single one is individually covered in a variety of different fabrics. Sorry, I've got Batty in here. Uh, so if you hear any strange noises, Batty's come to check out the sketchbook. Uh, they are covered in beautiful, amazing cotton fabrics. Let me have a look at it inside. And I also want to give it a quick little test. Let's see, I'm sure that the paper is going to be more for drawing materials. Uh, but let's give it a little test and let's see what it can hold. I'll very quickly share it with you so that if any of you are interested, you can get hold of her. I will pop a link to her Instagram page where she shares these and you can be in touch with her. Thank you so much, Hasina, for this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gift. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. This is the Cottons of Colour is the name of the company and I love this little tag that it's got around it to obviously hold it closed oh wow look at this oh goodness and the paper actually feels far nicer than what i thought it would i thought it would kind of be a much thinner drawing paper this feels like it could be around i'd say about 120 140 gms 
Uh, so let me have a little bit of a test. I'm going to just use the first page to check what uh, materials we can use on there. Before I start to test anything on the paper, I always just like to put a second piece of paper behind here because obviously uh, some of the materials might go through and I don't want it going through onto other pages or ruining other pages. Now, you're probably wondering, such a beautiful sketchbook, why am I using the first page to test materials? I am never precious about sketchbooks because otherwise, if you worry too much about how beautiful the sketchbook is, as beautiful as it is, and you worry that it's only going to be for masterpieces, I promise you now you're never going to get around to using the sketchbook. So I like to, first of all, start by just testing some things in the sketchbook and seeing how they react. Now, of course, I'm assuming the sketchbook is definitely made more for drawing materials. So this is just your normal black pen, black drawing pen and a bit of a pencil. I've got a water soluble pencil here. So let's see how that holds up. That's just an ordinary drawing pencil. This here is a water soluble pencil. Let me get my water pen. Let's see how that holds up. So we're now adding a little bit of water. Let's get some watercolor. Let's put some watercolor into it and see how it holds up. It goes a little bit grainy. The texture of the paper has got a bit of a grain to it, uh, which could be quite interesting when you're drawing. Obviously, you would have to just take into consideration that it's got ever so slight little texture to it. Let's see if I can show you the texture. Not sure if that will show up in the camera. Can you see it at all? ever so slightly textured. Let's try a marker. So I love to layer up my drawing. So I'll often add marker and then I will add something over the top of it. I love using ink. So uh, let's see, let me get my draw, my dipping pen. So this is just a dipping pen. I was going to draw with my dipping pen. How much of the dipping pen ink would it take? Matter of fact, let me get some ink on my finger. Let's see how much of that ink it can hold. And then what other materials? Let's take some gouache. Put a little bit of gouache on here. Uh, I'm just using all the materials that I love to use in my sketchbook. So let's say we water down our gouache a little bit. It does seem to go a little bit grainy with the water. Uh, it's almost like, I think that the, the texture of this paper is like cotton. So I think it's almost absorbing a little bit. Let's see, this is a water soluble crayon. So it's a wax crayon that's water soluble. Again, I think it's going to give that sort of cotton texture. Let's see how that holds up and what other materials have I got here. Oh, I also love to use a chalk pastel. Oh, there we go. The chalk pastel showing you the texture a little bit. There we go. Can you see the texture showing up? I mean, you would obviously use this texture to your advantage, knowing that it's got that texture. And I also love to sometimes put a little bit of water into my chalk pastels. So let's see how that holds up. And I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry and then we'll come back and have a look what's happening on the other side. So it's mostly dry, but before I turn over the page, let me take some of my chalk pastels because I also like to sometimes layer up, uh, you know, let's see how many layers of things it can take. Uh, let me get another color. We get a nice dark and let's see if I can go over the cokey area here. This is the marker. The marker pen so there we go I'm able to layer over it a lot of my drawings I will add layers and layers so it's just interesting to see how much it can actually take so should we see how the test has held up ha huh, nothing has gone through the page look at that clean surface and nothing has gone through the page which is fabulous because I really thought it would it has obviously the water material has buckled the page a little bit which means that the paper really doesn't have the sizing to hold water-based products so I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a watercolor uh, sketchbook but it's shown through just a little bit at the bottom here can you see so it's not necessarily a water I wouldn't say that it is a sketchbook that is made for watercolors 
but you could certainly, if you were working mixed media, use a few uh, wet materials. Although I would say that the sketchbook, it's so beautiful. I, I can't explain the texture of the, of the paper. It almost feels like fabric. And the only way I can think to describe it is that it feels like beautiful soft cotton. But I always like to do a bit of a tester. And to be honest with you, I really do think I could use other materials in it as well if the fact that the paper buckles a little bit doesn't worry me. And normally when you've been working a couple of pages and your sketchbook shuts, it doesn't really worry me if the pages buckle because they tend to flatten out when the sketchbook's closed. But if a buckled page is going to worry you, this is the most beautiful sketchbook to do drawings in. Thank you, Hasina. I think I am going to absolutely love working in this. And I will share a link to uh, Colors of Cotton's Instagram page below and you can give them a look. The fabrics are beautiful. You are going to struggle to choose. So that was loads of fun having you join me in my studio again today. I'll see you again next week for another little share from my studio. Thanks for joining me. Have a fabulous creative week and make a date with yourself to create.